Twitch. Uh, uh, there's Twitch. Twitch, help me, please. Turn that down a bit. Where? Scroll down. Not quite online just yet. Oh, hang on a minute. That's it there. It's still loading up the stream. Just give it a bit. Ah, there we go. So, the chat's up, the stream's up. We're all good to go. Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a bit of postseason content here on Contest of Speed. It's the AM1 Regionals Championship, a sort of Formula 2 style championship where we have a qualifying session, an 18 minute qualifying session, and then two 25% races. Um, and the way that they designed it is so then we go to each of the major motorsport regions around the globe. Last week, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, Europe uh, in... What was it again, Bot Hot? It was Italy and Spain. And how was that last week, Bot Hot, by the way? And hello, hello and welcome hello. to the commentary box. <laughs> hello. Hello, I'm back again. Um, after covering for yours truly, Smeg, last week. Yes, um, I was unable to attend, so. Um, yes, it was a success, I think we can call it that. Um, we had a pretty decent turnout, actually. Okay. Um, we didn't have many finishes in either race. There was plenty of incidents going around, but um, there was some pretty decent racing to watch, um, actually. Some pretty good strategic battles, a bit of weather. Yep. Uh, to keep things interesting, but it was a lot of fun. Um, and us, us kind of administrative group on the AM side, um, thought it was a good, like a big success. Um, so as Smeggy alluded to, six round championship, this being round two, so um, plenty of races to be done. Hmm. Um, if it was anything like last week, I think we're going to have a lot of fun um, in this well, off-season. I do think these shorter sort of like super sprint style races do attract a lot of action. And typically it's not a burden for the drivers to compete in this sort of racing format as well. This is sort of a fun time for the drivers in a way. So I imagine that um, we might see a few more drivers later on if this... Uh, racing series gathers enough attention so I think it will be very very interesting to watch but here we're in East Asia so the two racetracks we'll be going to the first one of course as you can see is the Suzuka International Racing Course a 5.8 kilometer 18 turn figure of eight racetrack that was opened in 1962 it was designed and built by a joint effort between the Honda Motor Company and Dutch architect John Hugenholtz the circuit itself has been involved in Formula 1 since 1987 and it's a very unique racetrack. The only figure of 8 circuit on the calendar. Historically significant to the country of Japan. You could very much argue that it's Asia's premier racetrack. It's a driver's circuit as well. Uh, it's a very flowy sort of circuit. High speed bend. There are plenty of high speed bends. And any mistake that you make, you'll be greeted with grass and gravel for the most part, except for here at Spoon. And also at Turn 1 as Pilar Toad. There's a nice little pirouette there, 10 out of 10 on the star there. He comes out pointing in the right direction as DK Nortec overtakes him. And smashes out an innocent, an innocent uh, polystyrene Rolex board there on the edge of the racetrack. But, um... <laughs> Oh, this should be very interesting to watch. And also, strategy wouldn't be too much of a factor, I would think, in this sort of format with such a short race. So, if people want to try and win this thing, they just need to be basically quicker than everybody else. Uh, I imagine they'll be pitting about halfway through. Was that the case in Spain and in Italy? Because sort of drivers getting to the halfway mark and switching compounds? Uh, pretty much. We had an early safety car in Spain, so the people who started on mediums tried to run softs for pretty much the whole race. Yeah. Um, a very limited success. Um, but a lot of tracks, the softs will last longer than the mediums, so you can start on mediums and get an undercut in your rivals, which is something you don't normally say. No. Um, but yeah, tyre strategy in terms of kind of wear and that kind of thing is really a non-factor, so it's really just down to racing, um, getting your pace up in quality, um, and then able to get through traffic in the race, particularly the second race, which um, is a reverse grid, so 
um, yeah, it's real just just driving, which I think we like. And we, yeah, strategy makes things interesting, um, but it's nice just to see a straight race sometimes. Mm. And that's what this hopefully is going to provide, uh, particularly with such a chopped up grid. Of course, being AM1 and AM2 drivers both together, the first kind of real opportunity a lot of these guys will have to see those on the other side, I guess. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's a really good format, actually. Um, and hopefully it does gain a bit more momentum um, we can finish off pretty strong. Um, but it's been a good start. Hopefully those AM2 guys get an idea of the sheer pace of AM1. And then they'll begin to know what targets they have to meet in order to get into AM1. Or how much work they need to put into it. So that will be a nice little sort of reference point for those AM2 drivers to see how they line themselves up against um, the top class in the America's Championship. That's, ooh, dearie me, Toad is not having a good time keeping that car stable. It's rotating a lot. And hello, Al. The very, very quick driver is here now. So I think yes. Assassin is going to have a bit of company. So... <laughs> Assassin dominated last week pretty much. I believe he won both races. Um, a shout out to Van Renewal, AM2 driver. He ends up with a podium, I think it was. Um, Final P2 in, I think, Spain, the second race. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Passerson was very, very quick last week. Mm. Um, let's see, Alp. Going to be giving me a bit of competition, and I do know that this is one of Alp's favorite tracks um, and mm. one of his strongest tracks. Um, I believe he set a whole time on mediums last season <laughs> uh, or two seasons ago um, oh. exactly but this is this is definitely an Alp sort of track as you mentioned a driver's track a real classic circuit mm. um, particularly Alp being on a wheel um, definitely a lot of control users I know um, struggle around this track particularly the S section um, but yeah I think the combination of Alp just being an absolute wizard and those things um, makes it pretty terrifying uh, so let's see if he does set a quality time. We'll wait and see how quick he'll go. If he does do quality, of course, he might just start from last place. You never know. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm i probably one of only a few pad users that actually enjoy this circuit. I don't know why. Like, in F1 2019, I hated this place. And I know hate is a strong word, but I hated this place. Like, there were auto-spin curbs everywhere, and there still is. Um, in this game, but the thing that caught me out more than anything was the infamous bump at the final corner That was just a nightmare Every time going around this final corner that clay funk is going around now just before sort of the apex the sort of uh, mid part of the corner there was this hump It was so irritating to go through because you have to if you're not using traction control you had to ease off the throttle Because if you go full throttle over the damn thing you can't spin out and it was awful. It was awful. It was genuinely awful to go through every single lap. And, and it really spoiled my feel of this place. It, it, now it's removed and these cars just feel very nice around here. I don't, I don't know why, but yeah. I, I just really I like this place on the pad. No idea why, but yeah. Just uh, a lot of fun to drive around. A real challenge of a racetrack. Fantastic. It's mm. so satisfying when you hook it up. Um, I did, I also enjoyed it on a pad. Um, I think just because it was a kind of real classic circuit. Mm. Uh, as I think Amram's just blocked Assassin on a flying lap, and that's not good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, now now that I, I drive on a wheel or attempt to, um, it just makes this place even better. It's so fun uh, mm. running a hot lap around here, and it's not too, too bad racing is there's a couple of overtaking spots um, but it is a real challenge and it's really rewarding to get it right um, I know a lot of people don't like Suzuka for the reasons you mentioned mm. um, probably mostly due to difficulty um, well the, a, the first sector can number. be a complete pain yeah like particularly turn 7 Dunlop curve the final part of the S's <coughs> excuse me if you touch that inside curb your car is always going to spin so and if it, you miss it, you're in the gravel out wide. You're in the gravel out wide. Yeah, exactly. So, it is a pain to get right. Same with Spoon. The second part of Spoon, namely, that inside curb. If you take that the wrong way, the car can 
spontaneously rotate and you can end up into a barrier. So they are, there are still several sections of the racetrack you do have to look out for, whether you're a wheel user or a pad user. But yeah, uh, I, guess, I guess it comes down to how you approach the game, whether you're here to just have some casual fun, just fly around the racetrack, or perhaps you would like a challenge. And for those in the sort of latter category, you would definitely enjoy this place. As, um, S double on Alpha is actually going to try and set... Well, actually, no, he's invalidated. He might have copped a warning at the chicane, which has resulted in him uh, invalidating this lap. And as you can see from the onboard, he's actually driving using the force, it would seem, because his character's not holding the steering wheel. I thought this glitch was patched, but um, no. Yeah, no, it's I've not. Got it yeah. That's fantastic. But um, no, we seem to have Obi Wan Kenobi behind the wheel of that racing point, it would seem. So, um,. We'll see how the Jedi Master fares around this technical circuit. Once, of course, he's able to set a legal lap time. You know that would um that would give us every answer to every question we've had about. <laughs> <laughs> oh dearie me, lunacy! Deciding to do a bit of rally cross at the exit of turn seven, he then smashes into the inside barrier and destroys the left-hand side of his front wing. That's not good, lunacy. I don't mind that sight. Honestly, um, yeah, for a mayor crashing into a wall. <laughs> you you have become familiar classic. with this site, Bodhon. Does it feel yes, warming, uh, welcoming? <laughs> yes, anything about two kilometers an hour will have destroyed my car. Uh, as ever, it's more the best bit about that joke, Bodhon, is that I get that. That's the best bit. I 100% get that joke. And it's actually ridiculous that your car managed to explode into a million pieces after touching a wall at literally four was it kilometers an hour or something yeah. it was so and then, slow and it was six the week before oh. um so the alfa romeo is made of toilet paper must be yeah so i guess salva when covid came about they made a massive investment in toilet paper um I mean, they and they had so much paper. of it they decided to make a formula one car out of it so yeah. Uh, you know? Whereas Fro went the other way and made a rock hard car, that thing never seems to break. So. Mm. Problem is, by making it rock hard, it made it horrendously slow uh, for 2020. Seems they rectified that for 2021, though. At the moment, anyway. We'll see how Ferrari fare throughout the rest of the season. Yeah, As, um, right. Jedi Master SWM Alp is exiting. Spoon, he cops an invalidation. Just running wide there at the exit of the double left hander. We'll see oh, what man, he... out of flex. He's already got three lap old mediums, so unless he still gets pole. Uh, but he might just pull it in now. If, if he can get pole on those tires, I will eat a hat. Nah, like, he's coming in. Yeah. I was going to say he might come in because he's running low on fuel. But um now, if he can get a pole on those tyres with that amount of age, I'll eat a hat, honestly. I, I might have to get a fair amount of tomato sauce in order to do it, but I will eat a hat. I'll hold you to that. I know you will. <laughs> As DK North Tech is going to come into the pits, running out of fuel with four and a half minutes left. Amram in the Red Bull is coming around the second Degna, underneath the overpass. And towards Kobayashi Corner, turn 11, named after, obviously, Kamui Kobayashi, after his astonishing performance, I think it was the 2012 Japanese Grand Prix, where he finished on the podium after making several spectacular overtakes at that corner. Around Spoon, the double left-hander where we saw Alp invalidate. Amram, he runs a bit wide, but he doesn't invalidate. Shows Alp how to do it. Now barreling towards the most famous corner on the circuit, 130R. Absolutely flat out in these cars, though Amram is down on his time. Now through the chicane. Third gear down to second, actually. Keeps it in second. Modulates the throttle quite nicely, and he's actually going to dive in. I think he'll have enough time to at least try and set one more flying lap, so we'll see what he can do. Vamu, driver you mentioned earlier. Blood hot. Currently P6 in the Mercedes-Benz. 
The Argentine is coming around Dunlop Curve. This will complete the first sector. The car looks a bit skatey. But it is fast. He's improved by a tenth of a second. Rounding the second Edna underneath the overpass and towards the tight hairpin of turn 11. Seventh gear slams it down to second. Gets on the throttle, modulates it nicely. Third, fourth, fifth gear. Rounding 200R. Now towards Spoon Curve. Eighth gear, running low on fuel. Shifts down to six and down to fourth gear. Didn't quite hit the apex perfectly there, but it's a pretty clean run through Spoon. Now towards 130R. Sector 2 says up by four tenths of a second. With that sort of improvement, he might be able to jump up into the top three. Slams on the anchors for the chicane, second gear, third, fourth, hugs the right hand side, rounding the final corner, DRS open, he goes third quickest. With a 1 minute 26.656, that's a lot of sixes, deary me. But currently third quickest for the Mercedes driver. VTEC has bailed out of a lap it seems. Clay Funk on the flyer, same with Alp, he's exiting turn two. Whereabouts is Lunacy? He's coming to a uh, the end of a flying lap. Through the chicane. Rounds the final corner. Lunacy will go seventh quickest with a 27-9. Not a bad lap, right at the end of the session. Alp has Man. bailed out of a lap. Hmm. Interesting. He's going to wait right till the death of the session to try and set a flying lap, it seems. Assassin has done the same, and there's a Mercedes off. That's Vermu at turn seven. He gets off the road completely as I think that's Lunacy is about to go by. It is. He's on an in lap. Oh, and Spacey Vert has had an accident in turn seven. There goes DK Nortec, almost T-boning the Williams. Oh, dearie me. What an onboard that was. Oh, and Vert gets completely off the road. I think that's Andy Wu coming past. It is. There's Vermu. Rounding the second Degna underneath the overpass. No flags everywhere at the moment. Rounding the hairpin. Oh, missing the apex by about a metre there. Rounding 200R. And towards Spoon Curve. It's a break. Six gear. Very nice through there. Very tidy. And he quite the competitive driver as well in AM1. Driving for McLaren. Had some really good results at you know, last season. Let's see yeah, what. Very consistently around that top five. Well, both McLarens were, both him and Kitten Petter were quite solid performers over the course of the season. Yeah. And he will cross the line to go fourth quickest with a 26.5. Um, Alps on a lap. I'm not sure he is. is. No, uh, everyone's in zero hot lap mode, so. Seems that, yeah, Alp is pretty much the only one left down the hill. If you want to learn how to take spoon then that's how you take it. Mm. He learned, Alp, he learned. Nine Alp. one. I'm pretty sure Andy's split time there was a ten something, so this is gonna be right up there. Through the chicane round the final corner. DRS open up to the line. <laughs> one minute twenty five Point one eight eight. That's not bad, is it? No, it's not. No. Oh. Uh, and Alf will do that traditional race driver thing. Oh yeah, I, lo I lost half a tenth here. I, I could have gone a bit faster there. The car, it wasn't quite on point, but you know, I stepped up. Anyway, that's that's actually ridiculous. Uh, and Pesasson, he. Possession is a very, very quick driver. Like I commentated another American championship where Possession really just dominated. But to be 
that much quicker on one lap three a bit over three and a half tenths that's actually so stupidly quick but Alp will lose it at the start because that's Alp Alp has really shocking starts but still he he'd actually be unstoppable if he yeah that, that's one area of his game that he really needs to work on is his starts He's got everything else, but he he loses so he loses so much on the starts. So I would not be surprised if we saw Passassin into the lead at turn one. You have Toad in third, Arbar fourth, Andy fifth, Vermu in sixth, Spacey Vert in seventh, Amram in eighth, Lunacy ninth, DK Norcare Tech rounding out the top ten, and V Tech and Clay Funk will start from P eleven and twelve with the three uh, free choice of tire. Well, it might be raining. You never know. We might see a bit of wet weather. Um, this is Suzuka after all. Let's have a look. It's overcast. There's some dark cl uh, clouds about, I wouldn't say. Uh, we, we might see some rain. We might. We'll have to wait and see, though. If this was Melbourne, then no doubt. <laughs> sure. Like a white cloud. Um, so yeah, who knows? Actually, I do believe Help uh, has the world record. Really? Uh, Japan, I don't know if I mentioned that or not at the moment. Um, I did mention he was very fast. But I do think he's sitting top at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's all about the start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a tricky start as well. Turn one and turn two, really, really tricky to negotiate side by side, and then you got the whole S mm. section, which is just as tricky. The track doesn't really open up until kind of off with the hairpin. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Basically, after turn one, it's follow the leader sort of stuff. If you go side by side, you just lose time. You massively increase the chance of an accident. So, yeah, the start is everything around here at Suzuka. As, I wonder if formation lap is turned on. It is turned on. Oops. As the Alpha Terry wants to get a move on, I think that's Andy. Driver set off on the formation lap. So, everyone in the top 10 except for Lunacy is starting on the soft compound tyre. Two drivers outside, VTEC and Clay, are starting on the medium compound. So, <coughs> excuse me. They're planning to get that out of the way early, chuck on the softs, and go balls to the wall right at the end of the race. I have no oh, idea when the pit nice. window is. I would be surprised to see the main runners pit like lap three, lap four. I'm pretty sure that the tire wear for 25 percent stays the same as 50 percent. I know the softs at Japan definitely last mm. uh, 13, 14, 15 laps. So Ooh. as we have an instant the formation lap, which is no good. Space Vert in M room. Okay. Yeah, I also would be surprised to see Lunacy Vtech Clay in in like the first couple of laps. Mm. It'd be very interesting to watch. I haven't seen too many 25% races over my time as a commentator, so it's a bit of an eye-opening experience for myself. So, see what it's like. Oh, he's got his hands on the wheel this time. Alp, which, you know, yeah. is very nice. Just hey, look, ears. Ma, I got pole position without, oh, with no hands. <laughs> Oh god. Oh, I got pole position with no hands. Oh Jesus. Why did I think of that? Yeah. We'll see what Passassin can do off the line because I'm sure he'll know that Alp isn't the greatest out of the blocks. No, I'd be keeping my eye on Arbar and Andy. I know they're both pretty good off the line in general. Well, four and five. Not really sure what Toad's like. Um, Not 100% yeah, like certain either. Race. Yeah, I mean, Everyone lining up into position at the front of the field. We'll have to wait for the tail of the field to catch up though because they're a fair way behind. <laughs> that has to be said. It's like a real F1 race. Yeah. <laughs> well, the guys at the front would be absolutely off their head right now because um, 
in real life F1 anyway because the tyre oh, temperatures tight. would drop massively. But um, fortunately, the game sort of saves your tyre temps so you don't have to worry about such a thing. But here we go for our little race at Suzuka. We have five red lights and it's lights out and away we go. Alp has a traditional rather average start and Passassen with the inside line takes the lead into turn one. And he tries to force the... Sorry, no, that's Toad trying to force the issue there into turn two. Can't get it done though. Amram and VTech exchange positions. Nortec and Lunacy exchanging positions. They're currently side by side through the S's and Lunacy comes out on top in that little scrap. But a fairly controlled start which is good to see. But everyone needs to get through turn 7 safely and I think everyone has. Through the Degners now. Everyone behaving themselves. No, ooh, Claren in the background getting a bit wide there at the second Degner. Pretty tidy though. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very good to see. But we haven't had any major incident on the first lap. But the expected has happened. Possession in the lead, Alpen second. Purely because of the start. Um, and they expect the unexpected, but I also think it's expect the expected. Yeah, expect the expected. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, Possession is got a bit of a margin as well so we'll see if he can keep it and Toad isn't too far behind Alp as well the first lap has been completed half a second separate the top two and it's half a second separating P2 and 3 then we got six tenths of Arba Andy Wu in P5 not too far behind as well so everyone's still close There's lunacy not mucking around Round the outside. Hard to do. Great move. And, and no DRS. That's another thing. On the mediums. That's that's a pretty committed move from Lunacy. But you don't often see that from <laughs> Lunacy. He's rather timid uh, when it comes to overtaking. And Nortec has a bit of a moment there at turn seven. Just might end. You would know as well. Bodhod racing with Lunacy. He's not the most aggressive bloke. But um, no, he showed some aggression Almost there. Only consistent drivers, um, but good mm. to see him pulling over that a bit, making some moves. As DK's lost the position, he almost looked like going up the inside of Spacey, but he went wide. Um, uh, DK is not in control of his car. He's sliding a lot in the critical traction zones as Toad. Oh, Toad's around. Oh. Toad's in the wall. He's in the wall. Oh. That's on the outside. How, how did he end up? Maybe there was contact with someone and he got um, shafted into the wall, I don't know. Maybe it's he ran easy. wide onto the AstroTurf and... It's too early in the corner to have lost it on traction, so maybe an incident. Mm. Arbar is two seconds behind Elp now. I'm at the front on my timing, so... Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. 2.3 seconds Arbar. is the gap, so... Yeah. No damage on Arbar's front wing, or at least not visible. I know sometimes the kind of lime green doesn't show up visibly. Yeah, uh, and Toad is in the pit, so he'll chuck on the medium tires and go to the end. So He's not out of it just yet, but I don't think he's in the contention to win this race. So, With two out in front, separated by seven tenths of a second, as Alb makes a complete mess of the second Degner. Fortunately, he doesn't lose too much time, but, <laughs> excuse me, he has lost a bit, as Toad is still in the pit lane. Jeez, whiz. That's taken a long, long time to get that front wing sorted. You can see the gap between 12th and 11th, it's massive. So... He's forgotten to go or something. I don't think pit lane's that slow. It's not a, it's an 80k pit lane, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's not a 60k, and the pit lane itself isn't particularly long, so... No, that, uh, It has been some time since I've seen a race at Suzuka, so... Maybe that is just the natural sort of length of the pit stop. Oh. All aboard the Van Moon train in the middle here. Lucy's Passassan is in, and he sped into the pit. Oh, it's got five seconds! Oh, there's a couple of guys in um, as well. Pitting so. in very early for the mediums. Yeah. Maybe the tyres are a bit unbalanced. I thought they were pretty similar to what they are in 50%ers. 
We'll um, wait and see. Um, it wouldn't be damage or anything, it'd be strategic for Passerson. Mm. Uh, same with Vamu. Although Vamu was struggling on his softs, so... I don't know, maybe they've just had the same tie in qualifying or something. Perhaps. Another option could be for... I don't know. Well, we'll see what Alp does. If Alp will respond to what Persassan has done. Because maybe that's what Persassan is looking for, is just a tremendously big undercut. So... But that's saying that those tyres are faster than three lap old softs. So... Yeah, so Which in a 50% race definitely wouldn't be the case. So, hmm. it'd be interesting. Yeah, it's a weird one. See what some of these leaders do. Uh, come around the final corner now for Alp. So, does he pull into the pits? He does. Maybe the tire wear is a bit worse than anticipated. Arbar stays out. And he's in. And Lucy will probably... No, Lucy's in as well. So he's going to go a lot of laps on softs. Mm. I wonder what the go is there. I wonder if they're all just thinking about an undercut. Don't know. Lucy's in on medium, so he thinks the softs will go nine laps fine, but these guys don't want to take him five. So, weird stuff. It is. I thought strategy might not play a part in this. Oh, Clay, sorry, I just jumped on board with VTech and Clay's just had a massive moment through the S's and he's hung onto it, but he's lost his position. And in um, P6 on the medium tyres, <coughs> excuse yeah. me. What's These the two haven't come in just yet. Yeah, so. I wonder if they're going to just go half half as VTech runs a bit wide again. So they're having a couple of adventures, those two, but that looks at things. Um, Toad. As we mentioned, with that slow stop, he's 22 and a half seconds behind Lunacy. Um, so he's probably just gone AFK for a bit in the pit lane. Maybe. <laughs> that, that's a big margin. That yeah, you expect maybe six margin. seconds. Minus whatever on cut. But yeah, weird. A little bit strange, but... Uh, see when Arbar bites the bullet and might be the slap. Let's see. In he comes. But this is a bit more sensible, it's towards the halfway mark, so... Spacey Vert... Amram stays out. Probably sensible too, as your teammates in the pits. Nortec, a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Yeah, not the way to do it. Vtec stays out, same... Oh no, that's Persassan. Race leader. Yeah, so Persassan's... Yeah, he's got a gap on Alp now, 1.6 seconds. Hmm. Really pulling That's away, but that 5 second penalty will hold him back. So will VTech, I would think. Persassan will have a hard time passing through here. Won't stop him trying though, using battery, using overtake. Tries to get alongside. Down the inside of Deng, the one gets it done. Both drivers, a lot of respect being shown there. They gave each other enough space to get around the corner. Alp now needs to find a way past. Oh, the Mercedes understeers at the mid corner. Alp has nowhere to go. He's going to look to the inside here at Spoon. Oh, and Vtex goes off the road completely. Yeah, I don't think the two made contact, though. Was there contact? Bit. Just a tiny bit. Really didn't look like there was any. Yeah, bit of a weird one, but Alps now through, which is important. He's gone through quicker than Passerson did. He's gouged back down to 7 tenths, so mm. good there for Alp. Amram into the pits now. Sector 2 yellow flags as well. That is Nortec. Okay. Oh, and behind him, Clay's done the same thing, and he's out. And he's out of the I just right. saw that in the background of that shot there. That's um, a very similar incident that I've seen before. There's a car rotating just after the apex and going into the inside barrier. No safety car as of yet though. And here comes Lunacy down the inside here into turn one. A side by side rounding turn two. Gets the traction down. They're still going to be side by side. Heading into the S's. Turn three. 
and Lunacy with a superior traction comes out on top goes into P6 the Argentine now has Spacey Vert right on the back of him they'll be coming around Dunlop curve turn 7 up and over the crest towards the two Degna curves can't find a way past here but if he can get a run out of the second Degna which he can't he actually understeered quite a bit there he's going to say he might be able to make an overtake into uh, this hairpin Kobayashi corner not quite Alp only seven well, actually six and a half tenths behind Passassan now he might be fancying his chances into turn one using the power of DRS oh his family's on his off the track and that's let Spacey Bear through just to move off the battle you have to catch a mid corner slide just clip that apex a bit too much so we've seen a lot of drivers get caught out by that and it's part of the challenge of Suzuka mm. another one bites the dust well, as I mentioned earlier if you make a mistake this track lets you know about it lets you know about it by crashing you into a barrier it's a very very tough circuit as Vermoo gets a 5 second penalty for speeding in the pit lane as he proceeds to retire from the session now how will this work for the next race because I know that the next race will be a reverse grid which Clay Funk leaves the session the next race will be the reverse grid of this race if I'm not mistaken so yep. will Vamu be starting I guess on pole because Clay just left the session so um, I'm trying to remember what we did last week how Arba did it I think he might I'm not sure we'll wait and see 10 scorers now in this race so you finish you got points mm. slash points the toad Alp using his battery to claw onto the back of Passassan heading towards 130R got 30% left compared to Passassan who only has 19 so Alp has a couple of cards in his favour he's got more resources he's got DRS down the pitch straight but the assassin has the trump card he's got track position so it'd be very very difficult for Alp to get by realistically he has overtaking opportunities at turn 1 maybe turn 11 maybe turn 13 at the start of Spoon as he has a bit of a wiggle at the exit of turn 2 another potential opportunity is at the chicane if he can get the run down the uh, back straight away I suppose is what you would call it through 130R if you're close enough to make a dive bomb down the inside and that then the chicane itself becomes an overtaking spot as Toad sets fastest lap so Alp has options but they're all sort of 50-50 options they either work out really well or they don't work out really well they're complete opposite you might get wing damage that will ruin your chances for a race win so Alp needs to play this smart well remember the penalty situation as well yeah he can play it really smart and not bother attacking that's, that's boring a, that is really He's boring not, yeah. and Alp is a racer and I think he would like to finish on track in first position so I think he'll fight this regardless Yeah, Passon has been good enough out of Spoon and out of Chicane to really not come under direct pressure mm. um, in breaking zones. Um, that Chicane particularly gets off really, really well. Um, mm. So Alps never quite been close enough to really send a nose through there. I mean, this might be his best chance here. Oh, it's going to have to be a late move. It's going to be very late. And he's gonna... Oh, Passon runs oh. wide. He opened up the door and that compromised his line. But he stays out in front just. The Passassan just sort of reacting to how Alp was nowhere near, long, uh, nowhere near uh, alongside him, but Passassan, I guess maybe out of fear, just sort of left the space there for Alp if he did indeed send it. Um, as a result, that compromised his line at turn two. But, um, yeah, maybe he's trying to be a bit too polite, Passassan. Or maybe just too cautious. Because... Um, even if Alp went for a risky dive bomb at turn one, there was no way it was going to work. So, no, he would have to bail out. So he would have had to bail out for the sake of his race. I mean, he's he's winning right now. He doesn't need to overtake, but 
the rage that in him is telling him to overtake. So, the assassin has pulled away quite a bit now. 1.1 seconds between the top two. Yeah, I think top on towards that tree and that. Uh, pass the assassins that have much to play with either, but just put together a really good lap in this lap. With only three to go, that could be enough to hang on hmm. on track. With a post race, we know he's going to lose it as it stands. And you know the rest of Alp, which is going to help. Gap of 1.1. Can Alp find a way to close back up on his rival? Or will he just settle back? Accept the win as the assassin has a 5 second. Well, that doesn't help Alp when you're missing apexes. My god. He was in a completely different postcode there. At turn 5, and he almost made a mistake there. At turn seven, as Nortec goes into the pits, increases the gap to about 1.2. Yeah, he's running out of track now, running mm. out of laps. Um, so Pass looks quite comfortable at the moment. Um, so I also need to pull out a wizard kind of lap. Um, or a Je Jedi kind of lap, I guess, to hit. <laughs> uh, to get back up to the back of him, but we've seen how difficult um, it's been a really force to move. Uh, Passing is strong in those two really important areas, out of spoon and out of the chicane at the last corner. Um, so, I think barring any mistakes, he's got it in the bag on track. Through the chicane, the gap is still 1.2 seconds when they cross the line. Will be two laps to go. So, Alp, he's only got about seven miles to try and clear Persassin if he can. If not, well, then he'll probably just settle back, accept second on track, but take the overall win. A bit behind, Andy is actually closing oh, in a little bit on our bar. Sorry. Alp just caught a massive slide there. Um, I thought he binned it. I totally binned it, but he caught it. The gap is now one and a half seconds, so the pressure is getting to him. Which yeah, he's is, struggling a bit. Hmm. Very interesting, as Toad is now on the back of VTech, heading towards turn one. Looks to the inside. Can't commit to it, though. Oh, but down the inside of turn two! Toad and VTech make contact. Toad into eighth place. A little bit of an exchange there. Yeah, a little, <laughs> little bit of argy bargy. Uh, I wonder if Vitex is struggling that much. He's only on three levels soft, so I don't think so. But mm, yeah, look... he's two and a half seconds back, so maybe some minor damage. But comparatively yeah. speaking, Lunacy is doing pretty well on six lap old softs. So yeah, I don't think his softs places. are the problem. He might have some sort of damage on the car. <laughs> Yeah, and he's actually caught Arbor here. I thought this little he gap has. was done as well. It was about a second and a half, but it's now under a second. And with a lot to go, you might get one chance uh, to make a move for Andy P3. Uh, straight battle on track as well. No penalties or anything to no. be a factor. But this does need to be somewhat of a magical lap from Andy in order to try and take third place away from Arbor. Because not oh, only terrible. does he have to close the gap, which is quite big, he has to try and pass. So, it's going to be a tall order for Andy to overtake Arba. Not impossible, it's a very tall order. How tall? Very. <laughs> very <Yeah>. tall. <laughs> he hasn't gained in sector one. No. Um, time that still, so he's probably gone run out of laps as well. Uh, gap at the front's 2.7 now, so mm. Paston's checked out in the latter half of the scene, even though he does have a lap all the tyres, so really finding some rhythm. Um, so he's going to wrap it up on the track. Um, but it won't be maximum points. No, it won't. Yeah, a costly mistake in the pit lane has ruined his chances for victory. Assassin will come around the final corner to take the checkered flag, but the win is not his. SWM Alp will win here in Suzuka. Oh, as 
DK Nortec crashes out of turn 7. Arbar will cross the line in P3 taking the final podium spot. Andy put up a late race charge but it wasn't enough. Lunacy will come home in P5 from starting 9th on the grid making the alternate strategy work quite nicely. Ambram P6 because uh, Spacey had penalties. The Williams driver drops to P7. Then we'll have PLR Toe crossing the line in P8 in rather dramatic style. No, he hasn't finished, has he? Because he's in enough to cross the line. Didn't get the flag next to his name. Oh, I got a oh, flag no, next to his name. Oh, I just glitch on my end then. Not the only glitch we've seen in this game. No surprise there, driver of the day, Lunacy. As I mentioned, started ninth, finished fifth. To no surprise, he made up the most amount of positions over the course of the race. Yeah, he's done well. But, um, out taking another W. Not in the circumstances he would have wanted. And you don't see that too often, do you? Michael Schumacher in a Renault outfit. No. But, um, I don't know, Schumacher just doesn't look quite the same in yellow, does he? Though he certainly no. did wear yellow back in 1993 when he drove for Benetton. They had a yellow uniform, so it's not the only time he's worn, <laughs> worn a bit of yellow. But um, there we go. Not a bad race at the front between Alp and Passassin. It was quite interesting to watch, and we had some action in the midfield. And the two SWM drivers finishing first and second with Arbar in P3, Andy fourth, Lunacy fifth, as I mentioned from ninth. Amram from P8 to P6, Svesi Vert qualified seventh, stayed seventh at the end of the race. Toad, uh, an unfortunate accident at Spoon results in him finishing eighth. Then we have VTEC in P9, uh, Nortec in P10, well rather, oh, he is classified, but yeah. Vamu and Playfun retiring out of the race. He met the 90%, I guess, so... Yep. There you go. So, yeah, on to race two. It's going to be an interesting one. A couple of guys up the front of the grid who probably wouldn't expect to be at the front um, with a normal mm. qualifying session uh, with this field, and a good chance for the guys at the back. Um, and China's an interesting track. Haven't really been there for a while for a league race. It's not so, the most popular place to go racing. I don't think that. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I know some people do like this place. They they have it as one of their favourites, but for me personally, no, it's not one of my favourites. Oh, I ha I have had some solid results here, but um, in fact, this is the first race track where I got a podium in an F1 league race. But um, yeah, it's not one of my favourites. It just certain parts of the racetrack just seem so cumbersome like the opening section turns one through four it is such a pain to go through there it's so tedious like you enter in flat out in eighth gear you shift down to fifth and then you turn in and do nothing else like you don't touch the brake you don't touch the soil you just be patient and wait and then you start to bring on the brakes for turn two. And you have to do this tight switch back between turns two and three. Then you have to be brave and try and get on the throttle as early as you can whilst rounding turn four. And then the other cumbersome section for me is turns 11 through 13 at the beginning of the third sector. It's a real pain to get through that. Um, particularly yeah. turns 11 and 12. It's just this awkward chicane. It's like... Yeah, it doesn't open up fun. like most chicanes kind of do. No, like a um, lot of chicanes are either really yeah. quick, or they're nice and long. Um, and with Shanghai at turns 11 and 12, it's just not. It's sort of in between. There's sort of this brief period where you go straight instead of turning. And it, yeah, it's good. I don't like it. And of course with turn 13, I have seen several drivers spin out there before, so... I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a couple of drivers spin out there. But yeah, Shanghai International Circuit, four, uh, sorry, 5.45 kilometers, 16 turns. Tilkadrome, as we all know, first hosted a Formula One race back in 2004. And the most unique part of the racetrack is the fact that it has a really long straight. 
<laughs> like a seriously long straight. Kilometre long, between turns 13 and 14. The latter corner, turn 14, it's... Hmm? It's a happen at the end, which is good. Yeah. A lot of straights are kind of medium speed corners these days, which is not great for overtaking. So, no. pretty so much textbook overtaking zone, straight in a hairpin. Straight in a hairpin. What I don't get, though, is that that hairpin is actually two corners. So, yeah. you got the made hairpin bit, and you know that little right hand kink? Like, that's just sort of there. That's yeah, a corner. That's an official corner on the official track map. That's turn 15. So, yeah, it's outrageous. It is. It's so stupid. But, and another thing I don't get is that you know when you go around the hip, there's like this little extra bit of tarmac on the outside that's just sort of there. Yeah, and then there's like that little kind of almost kink in itself on the exit as well. Yeah, it's so weird. Which is like pointless. Why did Toka decide? Oh, we have a bit more money in our, you know, budget. Why don't we just add a little bit of tarmac just here? There we go. That'll do. <laughs> yeah, it contributes a lot to the racing. It um, does. Really that little extra bit of... Oh, I'm so grateful that it's there. Uh, like, honestly. So, so grateful. It, it provides so much racing. Like, oh my god. <laughs> That's... Um, drivers will set off on their formation lap. I imagine this race... We've got one extra lap, but I think the lap time... Might be a bit longer than, than Suzuka, maybe? There's uh, a lot, lot yes. more slower corners here compared to Suzuka. But we do have that stupidly long straight. And then yeah, the stupidly the long pitch straight after. So. Yeah, even that's not too, too bad. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, how these guys approach it. It is a tricky complex again. I think someone's been on the formation lap. It's now for Tauri. And Toad maybe? again. He is Toad again. He's oh, making dear. a habit of that. Dear me. Um, but yeah, it'd be an interesting race. Um, sector two is very difficult to stay within someone. Mm. Um, for DRS, um, which is really important for making the most of that straight. Mm. Um, yeah, it'd be an interesting little race. Bam has joined, but it's a bit late. It is. I wonder if we can start a bit prematurely. Probably. Which is annoying. And also, apparently, Passerson has forgotten to put a setup on. So, ouch. That's gonna that, really. That's really gonna track. hurt around the. <laughs> this is probably one of the worst tracks to not have a setup on. Oh, any track's terrible without a setup, but you're right. Shanghai is definitely up there. It needs but, to be an and down force. Very precise with it. <laughs> but um, looking at the grid, we got Vamu on pole, then Nortec and P2 alongside on the front row. VTEC P3, Toe P4, then Spaceyver P5, Amram P6, Lunacy 7th, Andy in 8th, Arba 9th, Passassan in P10, then Alpha starts at the back of the field in P11 with all the work to do. Looking at the tyres, um, that's telemetry, tyres, Femu on the medium compound tyre, same with Lunacy, Arba and Alp. Everyone else is starting on the soft compound tyre. So we do have a little bit of a split field in terms of strategy. It'll be interesting to see how it all pans out in this 25% race. And here we go, everyone is lined up except for Toad, as he made a mistake at turn four. He's yeah, going to line up into his slot in and race, he might get a decent result. Wait and see. Everyone's lined up, everyone's ready to go here at Shanghai. We have five red lights. And it's lights out. And away we go. And Toad launches really nicely, sitting in the slipstream. But the Williams. Oh, oh, and off the road completely. That's his spacey vert. Had such a great start from P5. Challenging for P3. He's off the road completely. But it's Nortec leading the way, followed by Vermu. Toad's trying to find a way past. The Argentine makes a mistake and goes off the road completely. Persassan almost does the same thing. Without a setup, he's up into P4 and make that P3, actually. He's side by side. Oh, no, he can't get it done. He stays fourth place there after turn six. But, oh, my goodness me, what a start That's here at Shanghai. He must have. He must have really hugged that inside line. I know he can gain a lot of positions in career mode because the AI just total bots, but mm. I wonder if Assassin's Creed has done something similar. 
Oh, oh, he's made up a lot of places from second to last. That, that's... Uh, yeah. What's happening? Drivers, I think, are starting to behave themselves, which is quite nice. But two Mercedes having trouble, Spacey Vert making contact that... Oh, it's Andy and Toad. Oh, hello. People weaving on the straights, trying to break the toe. And here comes Toad, looking to the inside. Can't commit to the move, though. He doesn't have the momentum to try and make any sort of move. Oh, hello, Arbo and Lunacy. What are you up to? They're side by side, exiting the heaven. They're still side by side, heading towards the final corner. Lunacy is quite narrow, and he has to pull out and accept seventh place. And into the pits we will go. VTEC, Spacey Verd. The move stays out, so I'm guessing he doesn't have damage on his Mercedes uh, no it doesn't look like it and tell you what for F1 2021 apparently it's going to be a lot more difficult for us to um, see all the all the damage on the car because um, apparently the damage model has evolved significantly we not only have front wing damage but you've also got rear wing damage and probably most critically floor and barge board damage for F1 2021 so it is um, I think um, who did I see it off maybe Arava maybe Ben I can't remember who but I watched the video and yeah they've got several areas of the car that now can be damaged it's not just the front wing anymore I think you've got front wing rear wing Outer floor, inner floor, and I think rear floor is another one, as well as the barge boards, they can all be damaged. And my word, does it make a difference if you damage those parts? It really does hurt your car. Um, so, that'll be interesting to see for next game. <coughs> Excuse me. How that will affect league racing. Because not, not only will... Um, well, those sort of front wheel side pod contacts result in front wing damage will also result in floor damage. So, yeah, it'll be very, very interesting to see how that fares in the world of league racing. Not only that, but um, we won't have rich mix anymore um, because that's a thing in real life Formula One. They've dumped the idea of having fuel mode. So in the race itself and for qualifying, you only have standard, and I think a lean mode is available to you if you're running low on fuel. But it like really that. hurts you in terms of performance. So I like that. I like the sound of that. If that's all true and is all happening and all working well, properly, then I think... I, I think Arava was a video I watched. Um, yeah, you can see all the options, and, because he was only allowed to make a 15-minute video. Um, it's all work in progress at the moment. But yeah, um, it shows the damage model, it shows the MFD um, as well. Uh, you can see the fuel mode area is greyed out during a race. So I think the only things you can change is brake bias. And of course you still have overtake and whatnot. So, it was Amram down the inside of Passassan. Passassan fights back as Amram runs wide. And loses He's two places. <laughs> oh, Zandy into the pits already. Two laps in. Oh yeah, unlike Japan, this is one of the worst tracks for soft tie wear, I think. Absolutely. So we might be seeing people in earlier as than expected to see them in earlier rather than be surprised too. Uh, Zandy's the first one to bite onto mediums, so we'll see what he can do. Mm. Uh, Vamu was doing a couple of donuts in the second sector there, so that's why he's a long way off the pace. But this is the battle to watch, I think. Four way sort of fight for P3. Mm. Alp around and the Alp. outside. Ooh. Tricky to hang that. Almost impossible, and you can't. Here he comes, around the outside of turn seven. He keeps it there, and astonishingly, he manages to pull it off. He has the inside line for turn eight. He blocks Amram from getting by. He's into fifth after making a move around the outside of the left-hand sweeper at turn seven. How did you manage to pull that off? Just oh. like a Jedi trying to take a loose lightsaber. Well, Brings it to him. Absolute oh control. Oh, God. 
That's if I try and do one, that, please. I crash. And I make a complete fool of myself. He does it. Oh, no. I'm too good. I can make this work. My God. <laughs> yeah, Alf, you're going to make a move from there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Alf, I'll make a move. So, a couple of things happening. Toes also made a move to the lead on DK. And they're both coming in. They're both coming in. Pass. So, as Pissassin, as Alf runs wide, I think he was <clears throat> sort of um, put off there by Pissassin as I start to lose my voice, which is great. <clears throat> Nearing me. Not great as a commentator. No, it's not. Especially when you do a lot of it. Ah. Uh, I think I'm gathering it back now. Um, well, Alp and Arba are, are on the same strategy, so they're genuinely fighting on track. See what Alp can do. Where will he overtake? Well, the most obvious place is at turn 14, so... I have to wait a little while until we see a bit of action between these guys. <clears throat> yeah, Amran is actually not too far back either. He's staying around about that second mark and he closed a little bit in that first sector. <laughs> mm. So he's sort of doing okay. Oh, the move, five second penalty as he retires from the race. Yeah, he was doing some more doing us in the third sector this time. So um, I know he's always asking in the M2 chat whether he can do some burnouts for Holly and stuff. <laughs> I guess this is his chance too. Um, yeah, Alp's pretty close. I'm not sure if he's going to have quite enough momentum, but it's a very, very, very long straight, so... Um, he's not using overtake, so he's going to bide his time for a bit, I think. I think you're right. He might make a move at turn one, when, uh, when we hit onto the pitch straight. He might use his overtake then. He needs to get the final corner right, which he does pretty well. There we go, he uses his battery, uses DRS, sitting in the slipstream, closing in. Amram goes into the pits, meanwhile, out down the inside, into turn one, and takes the lead. Heading into the tight hairpin of turn two, and three. Arba yep. just sort of has, has to accept his fate, more or less. That's what the really good racers can do, they can, they can set up a move um, mm. from... Not even just a couple of corners back, but even a lap. And I see Alp there not wasting that battery in that long straight, which most kind of just casual racers just dump everything and go for the hairpin. Mm. But he knows that's ERS straight in turn one, just going to get him straight back. So, better just time a bit, dumped that ERS. I mean, he knew Arba couldn't really fight back and get that move done. So, really smart racing as we have a safety car. Yeah, so Spacey Vert has had an accident at the final corner. I think he's given as he did into the wall and he's out of the race and as a result that has brought out the safety car and I imagine everyone is going to pit even the medium runners <coughs> I think might pit for another set of softs have a look at his P3 again Mr. Lunacy himself he's going to gain a lot of places out of these Indeed. stops <coughs> well I think all of the medium well. runners who started on the mediums are going to benefit massively from this yeah, Sauce will probably just get to the end. He'd probably rather be on him though, just being a quicker tyre. Uh, a couple of guys are probably pushing their deltas a bit, trying to make the most of the yellows. Top two are definitely going to come in because they have to, as will Lunacy. Yeah. Uh, but Andy's going to be an interesting one. Because, yeah, these guys are fairly close together, so if you elect not to pit, you will gain track position from it. You're on fresh tyres as well. But what do you do? Uh, Into the pits end. goes Andy. Toad stays out. Nortex stays out. Assassin stays out. I think that's understandable as he's got a default setup. Amram stays out. So Andy's going to lose a lot of positions because of that. But he's yeah, on so fresh soft compound tires. The so Toad gets between Elf and Arbor. Uh, which could be quite important for Alp there. He might be able to get a gap before Arba can get by. That's true. Um, so that's going to throw a little bit of a spare in the works, but it'll also be interesting to see, because the safety car's not going to last long. So few guys in the race that they're all going to catch the pack quickly, so we might even see it in this lap. Potentially. Um, it's just a matter of whether the sauce will last to the end. Um, if that'll be any good, because I'd imagine by kind of the fourth or fifth lap that the mediums will be quicker. Um, 
It's just a matter of those guys hanging on for long enough to actually make the most of it when they are. Um, so, still a couple of questions, I guess, but I think Softs are going to be the ones to be on if you are serious about winning this race. Yeah, seeing as the field is bunched up a little bit and we have to wait a little while for the safety car to go back in, I might as well keep mentioning about F1 2021. So, there's the, there's the damage model that has been sort of um, revised. The fuel has been revised as well. But there are settings that affect... Like, here in this game we have, like... Uh, no damage, reduced damage, full damage, or simulation. And that's still a thing in F1 2021. But what they've added is a setting called uh, rate of damage, or something like that. And I'm guessing it's going to be a thing where you get damage over time. So if you damage a part of the car over an uh, increasing period of time, it will continue to get worse and worse and worse and worse. That also has, I think, uh, none reduced full and simulation setting so um, that'll be interesting <clears throat> there is also a setting that affects how much power you lose when you go into the lean setting so you can adjust that to where it can be realistic so if you drop it into lean you lose a lot of horsepower or you can change it so then it, you don't lose as much as Passassin actually pits for soft compound tyres <clears throat> yeah, safety car not coming in, so might as well. Might as well, yeah. Um, what else was there? Um, and according to some, the tyres have a new model and they feel different compared to F1 2020 in particular. And I think the way that Arava put it is that they feel more sim they they feel the tires feel like you can lean on them a little bit but they can let go at times so they want uh, I wouldn't necessarily call F1 2020 arcadey but it's definitely more user friendly in this game compared to some of the previous titles and I think they're going with more of a slightly more sim based setup with F1 2021 as the safety car is in this lab um, and I think that's about it in terms of the major things I think that I've noticed um, hopefully it all works but no it sounds like they're taking a step in the right direction I think I mean it's not the most simmy game but you still want to kind of make it as realistic as you Mm. kind of can get away with while still being able to sell to ordinary people um, it is representation of the official F1 so you want it to be relatively accurate yeah of course the fact they're willing to change and adapt things like that um, is good it's just a matter of it all kind of coming together and mm. working because we do know that 2020 was quite buggy a lot of updates a lot of things need to be fixed particularly off the bat mm -hmm. um, so as long as it all works I mean it sounds promising uh, one thing is to note that I noticed from the video, uh, Australia hasn't changed in terms of its layout just yet, so we still have to wait until that is revised. But, um, yeah, well, the actual car tarmac's not down yet, I can tell you that. Oh, that's uh, right. Toads yeah. just Cop. to... Give himself yeah, right. a penalty. Same with Passassan, same with Nortec and Amram. They all have penalties next to their name. Down the inside, Arbar. An aggressive move gets it done. Lunacy tries to follow suit down the inside of turn two. Can't get it done there. Will he get a switch Might back here at turn four? Either. He's got to run. He's along, <coughs> alongside and past. Into P3 goes Lunacy. Oh, they make contact there at the exit of turn five. That's a weird one. Mm. That's a very weird place to make contact there. I don't really think Toad opened up the steering too much, but Lunacy didn't really chop across from either, so... It's purely incidental, I guess, but losing up the P3, totaling those three other holding mediums now struggling mm. a little bit, which you'd expect off the bat with the softs. Um, but with that extra lap on the safety car, um, I think that's going to help the soft runs more than anything. So Absolutely. keep an eye on the likes of Addy and Pass coming through. But top three on softs now, you expect to kind of pull away a little bit 
Mm -hmm. um, see how long Lunacy can hang on to the back of Alp and Arba, who we know are very, very quick. So, um, interesting start. I think Andy's going to try and make up a move here. He's got so much grip through the long right hander, which mm -hmm. you know is so tricky, particularly with old slippery tyres. You know, can't quite put the foot down. But Andy, with all the grip you think you possibly desire, might even line up a move here on DK in the braking zone. Down the inside, and he's going to go. He's going to double lock up. It gets the car stopped on the apex really nicely and gets that move as well. So a couple of places for Andy now to P5. He's got his teammate up next. Um, so making the most of those soft tyres, which is good to see. So well done to Andy for getting through there pretty cleanly. It still needs to get it's past Toad top. in order to access the top three who are starting to pull away a little bit from those behind, particularly Alp and Arba. They've already got a one and a half second margin over Lunacy. They're actually still within a second of each other, the two leaders. Arba will be trying to stay within... Oh, what's that? That's Amran, I think, dropped it. As uh, Pastor and Deke having a bit of a scobble as well. Mm. So a bit happening in the back. Um, the gaps are starting to spread a little bit. Arba's lost a bit in the second sector. Alps put together a really good second sector there. That gap's gone from about seven tenths up to one and a bit seconds. Mm. Um, that'll be a warning for Arba as well. So a bit of pressure there, uh, perhaps being applied from Alp for Arba to keep up. Um, but gap now 1.2, so he's not going to have DRS at the rate we're going. And honestly, not many people are going to have DRS at the rate we're going. But no. um, and you might be the next one to the move on his teammate. Um, we saw them doing a bit of chaotic weaving a bit earlier on. Uh, I wonder how hard Toe's going to fight this. I Let's assume see. fairly. It's not much on the line. Can't get it done here just yet. Didn't have the momentum to get by into P4. We'll have DRS. Oh, as Alp doesn't do oh, himself any favours with a penalty. So... That's hurt his chances for a race win. Arbar's now got a more realistic target to stay within three seconds of Alp and he might be able to take the race win here at Shanghai. Yeah, and four laps. Oh, it's not impossible for Arba to stay within that. I know Alp is heinously fast, but it's not impossible. But, um, Andy still applying a pressure to his teammate Toad who has succumbed a little bit to it. Having a moment that was, there. That was very late out the corner. It was, wasn't it? Unusually late. That's a weird one. It's very weird trying to get on as soon as he can, but he's still going to stay, stay safe from his teammate. He's not going to have DRS in front, so that's going to leave him a bit exposed. Um, so Andy might try and force a move. No DRS yet again. I don't think until next lap, so hmm. might be safe for another lap. Although through here is probably where the tide difference is going to make just as much difference as anywhere. Uh, but Toad does do alright there, he gets off the corner pretty well. Um, and you know he does have DRS, mm. uh, my mistake there, so he might see a move here. Closing, closing very, very rapidly, and he's going to get alongside the braking zone down the inside. Does he get it stopped? Misses the apex slightly, Toad will switch him back and get it at least half back, but not sure if he's quite going to have the momentum to hang it around the outside and he could run him off but leaves him some space uh, but he does get through and we'll have DRS on the main straight too um, so Andy getting through there but Toad making him work for it uh, which is what we like to see as spectators hmm. oh, so very nice, nice job there again from Andy very nice little um, scrap there between those two yeah it was fun and Lucy's not too far away either uh, so Andy might still get a podium here from almost last after the safety car restarts so that would be a too bad of a return for mm. him. But out in front, the gap is now two seconds between Alp and Arba. When they cross the line the next time round, it'll be two laps to go, so Alp needs to find another eight tenths. I'm sure these two boys are pushing as hard as they can right now, giving it everything they've got. Because Alp knows the target, same with Arba, as Arba misses the apex slightly there at turn 11. Gap increases 2.3 seconds now. Almost 2.4. It is 2.4 now. So a small but costly mistake there for Arba. And Andy is closing onto the back of Lunacy, so we might see another battle again between these two. 
Yeah, two laps to go. It's going to be close. Um, Lucy's still holding some decent pace, and he is catching him. Um, maybe just get DRS on the main straight. I think it's just in the second there. I mean, he does. That's going to help him close in. Uh, two laps to go. So Lucy's definitely going to have to defend for that podium. Um, see how hard he goes at it though. We saw a pretty, um, not necessarily aggressive, but decisive, confident moves in the last race from Lunacy. So we'll see what he does on the defensive side. Mm. In this race here, um, quality of Andy behind him. You know, Andy's pretty quick. Uh, very handy around many tracks. Uh, so that's going to be probably the battle to watch towards the end. Mm -hmm. As looks like Alp has now just about pulled that three, se uh, three seconds. Mm. Uh, so Alp will hang on. Um, at the rate he's going out, Arbar's pulling away from Lucy a lot, but not able to stay with Alp. Um, there it is, the three seconds, so Alp is safe um, for now. We'll keep between the white lines. Andy now half a second behind Lunacy. He's going to have a fairly clear chance at the hairpin, I would think, of getting by the Alpha Romeo. See what he does, rounding the sweeper. Gapping Who will just the a alpha little bit there. Of this Battle of the Alphas. Lucy gets a good run. Um, mm. I think that Darius is going to be a bit too powerful. Not using any battery though, Andy. I think he might be doing what Alp did not too long ago. And perhaps try and make a move into turn one as Nortec overtakes Passassan. Oh, Passassan fighting back. DK fighting back. Don't have a look at that in the moment as Ludacy misses the Apex on the final corner this should be a straightforward move at the beginning of the last lap Andy is into third place onto the podium he goes can Lunacy find a way to fight back I'm sure he will certainly try to fight back that gap is just over three seconds I don't think it's quite over just yet certainly Alps looking good but it's not over until it's over you know, the second sector is where he's very strong, but Arba has, yeah, he has caught a couple of tenths back, so it's not done. A um, no. little mistake. It really changed the game. It's back up to three and a half, so that second sector, oh, really strong through there. Mm. Um, might be a matter of downforce on the back straight. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not quite done yet. Lunacy is still hanging with Andy, but I think Andy's going to be safe enough. Toad's not too far back from Lunacy, but he's not going to be under direct pressure, I don't think, either, so. Um, yeah, it might be as it is for now. Uh, DK's still in the back of Passerson, um, and they're, they're both driving a bit weirdly. Um, look like they're both trying to redress each other for some reason. That they want weird, DRS but... is what they want. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit cheeky. Oh, but... <laughs> DK's going to get it, but Elp's coming around the final corner now. Yeah, it's got that gap, so yeah, I think he is going to win it. He will indeed. He'll take the check and flag and wing in here in Shanghai, Arba will cross the line in second Andy, a great comeback finishing on the podium in third, Lunacy a solid drive, finishing P4, Toad P5 Nortec and Passassan scrapping it out Passassan will come home in P6 because of post race penalties Nortec will be our final finisher in seventh so, driver of the day saw that one coming, started from last finish first there you go yeah he's not and there's something very wrong with it but that was a great race through the field there for Alp um, did it pretty well um, gets the biggest trophy again so another racing point win We're joined by a couple of different guys on the podium which is nice so uh, well, again, again. take in Alp. the site while we can because we won't be seeing a pink suit on the podium for some time once we get the F1 2021 seasons underway. But, um, win with fastest lap as well for Al. Quite a nice little race here at Shanghai for the ever dominant driver. Arba P2, Andy P3, rounding out the podium. Lunacy in fourth from seventh. Toad P5, Passassan with a default setup, hanging on to P6, Nortec P7. And our three finishers, Amram, Spacey Vert, Vamu, and Vtech at the back of the field. <coughs> Not a bad little format. I enjoyed that. I somewhat enjoyed that. It's quite nice. 
good seeing a couple of different tracks as well. Keeps things interesting and sort of mm. like a grid, almost like a stage cooler race um, when everyone gets brought back together. Um, the reverse grid, so mm. uh, the gaps don't just continue to extend. Uh, so it keeps people on their toes, which is good. Almost like sort of a compulsory safety car, I guess. But um, mm. yeah, it's good. <clears throat> it's a little, a little format we've got going, and uh, it's decent racing, which is good. Absolutely. But um, I think that will wrap everything up for this little session that we've had. Like I said, a bit of a sort of Formula 2 sort of format, which makes Formula 2 very, very interesting, is when you get the reverse grid formats, the shorter races as well. Always a lot of fun to watch. And this was no exception. Two nice little races around two of the best racetracks in East, a uh, East Asia. So definitely did enjoy myself. What's <coughs> You've got the calendar, I imagine, in front of you. What's next? Next Bottom. week we're in the Middle East for two of your absolute favourite tracks. Oh, yeah, that's great. It, guess what? Bahrain and Abu Dhabi. How oh, good. Absolutely spot on. So that'll be interesting. Um, two more Tilga Drums. Um, I, I mean, <clears throat> in theory, they're fantastic racetracks. Um, and there are some overtaking opportunities, theoretically a bit of everything in them, but um, I know quite hit and miss with some people. So um, I know they do throw up some decent races, though, um, as spectators, even if they're not so mm -hmm. fun to drive for some people. But that's going to be fun to watch, I think. I mean, oh, wow, I am really losing my voice. I mean, you're not wrong. In, <coughs> in the virtual world, we can get some half-decent <laughs> racing. But... Um, uh, I I particularly hate Abu Dhabi. Screw that track. It can go away. That's what it can do. It can go away from Formula One forever. Or get June redesigned. I don't care. So, seeing the cars under lights, which is always pretty cool. Yeah, but we got Bahrain for that. Now we got Singapore. You know, redesign it. Please, Tilka. Surely you realise your own creation is no, god awful. <laughs> well, I think Tilka can design. Like he designed Sepang and he designed Bahrain. Okay, both of them are pretty damn good racetracks. That has to be said. Yeah. And it's so sad to not see Malaysia on the calendar for some time. Um, I hope it comes back one day because it is a fantastic circuit, Sepang. So, uh, Toka is quite capable of making a great circuit. He, sc he, screwed, he screwed up with Yas Marina. He really did. It's not a good circuit. It's not. <sighs> but yeah, in, in, the, in, in the virtual world, it's, it's not bad. I've seen half-decent races around Yas Marina. And I've seen plenty of good races around Bahrain. I just suck at Bahrain, so... It, I don't like that track because I suck at it so I'll be looking forward to those two races says the optimist in me but, um, we'll see what it's like next week but um, until then I've been the Smeg my co-commentator is uh, Bodhod thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next week for the Middle East tour of the championship at Bahrain and Abu Dhabi until then, goodbye.